Okay, no one's made a video about this before. I know these are slightly different size. This is an N38 Gauss Neodymium, and this is an N60 Gauss. This one's actually extremely powerful. Um, it's larger, but it actually has a smaller magnetic field. I used to get this question all the time. I'm going to show it to you underneath the supercell here. That this one actually has a larger spatial magnetic field than does this one. People don't understand actually how a magnet works. It would be as if you were to turn up the power on the output of your shower nozzle and then the uh, exponential increase, of course your drain in the bottom of your shower doesn't actually suck, it actually drains, but imagine if you were to turn up the pressure on your shower head that the uh, drain in your uh, bathtub would uh, increase exponentially. So, so I usually get this question, people say, well I bought some really powerful magnets on eBay or wherever, but uh, the, sh the field is really small. I must have got gypped. Now notice how large, take a look at this larger circle right here. I'll actually go directly over it on this N38 Gauss Neodymium right here. And this is the case on any, they don't have to be cylindrical and they don't have to be the same size as long as they're roughly the same size. You'll notice if you actually have an N38 or N40 Gauss and like an N55, and it's hard to find an N60 Gauss, that the actual field strength as it's increased is much smaller. And I'll show it to you here. Okay, you see how large this is? Take a look at this large circle right here. The magnet, of course, is right there. And now we're going to place it on the really powerful one. There we go. Let me center it perfectly here. You notice how much smaller it is? There's also a black ring right here around the magnet. The actual, I've got some sort of glue on my hand. The black ring around the edge of the magnet, let me zoom in so you can see it. This is a really powerful one. Is uh, The magnet is literally um, on the centrifugal magnet because the magnet actually has pressure zones on each quote unquote pole. Is actually black right here because it's so powerful, it's actually working its way backwards, so not as much as actually flexing out. And here you can see the circle right here as I outline it here. See how small this is? Let me go back to the less powerful one. Remember this one's N60 Gauss, the next one is N38 Gauss. Now notice how large this one is here. Not only is the magnet smaller, but uh, it's an N38 Gauss, it's a less powerful one. There is a point right around N42 Gauss where the magnet, magnetic field, as the, uh, as the magnet becomes more powerful, doesn't increase. We actually have to think in terms of counter space and dielectricity, but it actually decreases. You move it around. So not, see, when you actually let a magnet sit too long on a supercell like this, which is really sensitive, it'll leave marks. Eventually you can work, massage it out of the ferrofluid and the mouse milk, but... Uh, you see it's a much larger magnetic field. I'll go back and forth again really quickly there versus there. Smaller, much more powerful, smaller magnetic field. You can see how small it is right here versus here. This takes up about, what do you say, about 80% of the feral cells viewing area? 80, basically. And go over to the powerful one. And this one takes up about what? 60% roughly right here. And this, folks, is why a more powerful magnet has a smaller spatial magnetic field. Is because when you increase the output, which magnetism, there's no such thing as magnetic attraction. That's dielectric acceleration. The dielectric acceleration, of course, is right here at the center of this black hole. If I actually get down, you can actually see it too. See how it looks like a bowl shape? This magnet is really powerful. This magnet is so powerful, like I said, this black ring around it is the actual physical edge of the magnet where centrifugal magnetism exists, but because it is so damn powerful, much of the magnetism is non-existent right here, and it is actually fluxing back towards the center, so it's centrifugal divergent. You see the three-dimensional effect? If you actually had this in your hand, you'd be really shocked. But... Uh, I mean, the dimensionality of it. So it almost feels like you'd reach in and grab it. And here you can actually see the toroid surrounding the magnet of the true magnetic field. As I zoom out right here, and as I go down in, you can actually see the torus. You see that? But see the black ring right here. This magnet is literally so powerful that the centripetal convergence, which is uh, not magnetism, but dielectricity, 
is actually sucking the magnet backwards. Actually, it's a little more complicated than that, but it's essentially it. Imagine if you turn the water pressure, the way a magnet works, imagine if the, you turn the water pressure up so damn high that the, the drain would suck so much that instead of actually spraying on your head, it would just go directly from the spigot down to the drain. <laughs> that's essentially, that's about the best analogy I could think of because uh, you have to talk about, you have to understand space and counter space. You see, I actually left it sitting there too long. It kind of left a scar mark on the ferro cell. And you see the other side of this is just black construction paper. You know, it's not like you're actually looking at the magnet. I mean, since it's fields, I don't actually need to see through this. This part of Clea is clear, of course, but the other side is just black construction paper. The field, of course, is... See, I let the magnet sit for too long. Now I've got a scar mark. Dope. Especially with a really powerful magnet like this. I left a scar mark. It's like, uh-oh. It's all right. You can massage it out by doing this number. It'll massage the ferro flow back out. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, please click the link below or join Patreon. And uh, any donation greatly helps as I toil away on uh, my... Uh, now you can see the donut, the toroidal donut surrounding this magnet so clearly. That runs again. It's much smaller on this powerful magnet than it is on the, uh, on the uh, less powerful magnet. And that's the way it works. You have to understand space and counter space or non-Cartesian reality, which would be true inertia. Thank you so much for watching, and bye.